Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now, if you've been keeping up with the channel, you know a couple weeks ago I did a video about five animals that should be here in the UK. And today we're gonna to be talking about five animals that shouldn't be here. And so stick around to learn about the animals that have been brought over to this country and that potentially are causing damage, some that might not be. And just, yeah, let's find out a bit about the invasive species of the UK. Before we get started with the list though, can we just acknowledge that this is the first day in probably a month where it hasn't been just torrential rain all day long. Like, I've missed the sun. Now, to start this list off, let's look at number five, which is gonna be the gray squirrel. And now, I don't know about you, but that's an animal that here, I can't just go for a walk down my street without seeing tons of them. They're literally everywhere. But natively, they're from North America and were brought over to the UK in the 1870s as just an ornamental species to go on the ground of stately homes and just on people's estates. However, it was unknown at the time that they carry a pox virus, which our native red squirrels are highly susceptible to. And sadly, as a result, the red squirrels here have now been pretty much wiped out across most of Great Britain. And once the damage being done by the grey squirrels was finally being seen in the 1930s, releasing them was made illegal. However, the damage had already been done. Now, number four on the list, I think is gonna come as the most surprising one, as it's gonna be the European rabbit, which you might think is a native species thing, as there's so many of them, and they're so ingrained in our culture and everything. They were actually brought over from mainland Europe by the Romans originally. That's right, an animal which is now such a familiar sight here in the UK was actually first introduced by the Romans in the year 43 AD for its meat and its fur. Although, it's not thought to have actually become established here until the Normans introduced more of them in the mid 12th century. But by the 1940s, the rabbit population had gotten so high and they were causing so much damage that a virus called the myxomatosis virus was purposely introduced and it led to a population decline of almost 99% in around two years. However, in the 1990s, the population had pretty much recovered and there were about 50 million rabbits again here in the UK. Now, number three on the list is gonna be the Chinese water deer which here in the UK we have tons of invasive deer species but today I'm going to be covering this one and as the name suggests the Chinese water deer is natively found from China but can also be found in Korea and surrounding areas. These cute fluffy looking saber-teeth deer were originally brought over to the UK in the 1870s when they were kept in London Zoo. However, they escaped from Whipsnade Zoo in 1929 while there are also multiple other escapes from deer parks across the country. Amazingly though, it's now thought that the British population of Chinese water deer actually makes up for around 10% of the global population. And they can mainly be found here in Cambridgeshire, Bedfordshire and Norfolk. However, there are also scattered populations elsewhere in the UK. They prefer living in reed beds, river shores, woodlands and fields, which make the wet fenlands of Cambridgeshire and Norfolk ideal for them. And coming in at number two on the list of invasive species here in the UK is gonna be the pheasant, which again is a really common sight here, but came from the other side of the world. Just like the Chinese water deer, pheasants are natively found in Asia, and they were introduced across many areas of the world as a game bird for hunting. However, they were thought to have actually originally been brought to the UK by the Normans in the 11th century, where they became locally extinct until the 19th century when they became a popular game bird here. Now, they can be found widespread across the UK and are a familiar sight to anybody out in the countryside. And I'd be pretty surprised if you've taken a walk anywhere in the English countryside and not actually seen a pheasant. And finally, number five on the list is gonna be stick insects, which can actually be found down here in Cornwall I'm pretty close to where I am currently. And so if you want me to go look for them in a future video, then leave a comment down below letting me know, and I'll give it my best shot, because, I mean, I know the spots where they are, but just never actually had the chance to go look yet. And I think it could be quite interesting to find some stick insects down here. Now there are three species of stick insects that have become successfully established down in Devon, Cornwall, and on the Isles of Scilly. Natively, all three are coming from New Zealand, and these species are able to cope with our climate quite well. 
And the first UK record of a stick insect in the wild was the prickly stick insect, which was found in a painting garden in 1909, with a further locality in 1943 from Tresco Abbey Gardens on the Isle of Sicily. The next species to be sighted was the smooth stick insect, which was found in 1949, also in Tresco Abbey Gardens. And the third and final species of stick insect found wild in this country was the unarmed stick insect, which was recorded at Truro in Cornwall in 1979. And all three of these species have travelled here when plants were shipped to the UK from New Zealand, arriving at nurseries down in the southwest of England. And from those nurseries, the stick insects were able to start their colonies and spread outwards. So that's going to be it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed learning a bit more about the species that shouldn't be here in the UK and just a bit about their history and how they got here. But if you enjoyed today's video, then why not leave a like and subscribe to the channel to follow me on my adventures learning more about the UK's wildlife as well as looking into more stories about worldwide wildlife. So that's going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next adventure.